Loveland Magazine viewers, here we are um, actually kind of quarantined at Loveland Magazine here today. Um, I have a very, very special guest. I have Darnell Parker here today. Um, he is the coach at Loveland High School for women's basketball. And uh, let me tell you, this guy has quite a bit of a resume. Um, very talented coaching wise. The girls are unbelievable student athletes. I just thought it would only be right to start off the new year interviewing you, Coach Parker. Uh, welcome to our little Zoom interview here. Thank you very, thank you very much. I, I appreciate it. I'm glad to be with you guys this, this morning and uh, looking forward to it. Awesome, glad to have you. So um, I wanna start off Darnell. I, I just want to talk about your personal journey um, as a coach this season. You know, I know there was somewhat a bit of struggling with the COVID-19 coaching, you know, training, all of that. You know, talk to us a little bit about the struggles and how did you and the team overcome it? Um, it was, it, it was, it was tough because last year um, we, we ended our season, but the, uh, COVID kind of messed up our end of the season plans, being able to have a, a, a get together at the end. So going into this year, you know, we were kind of in an influx in the summertime. Um, we had limited access to our to our kids. And uh, once the season started, you know, we had a lot of protocols for the state, not only the state, but also the school and how we were going to get together you know, with our teams. And, you know, we made a decision very, very early in order to protect all of our kids. This was the first year that we separated junior varsity and varsity practicing. So I didn't get a lot of time with our younger kids because we had to practice. Uh, we had to practice separate. And um, following all the protocols early in the season, we got uh, put on quarantine due to close contact at the you know, at school, we had multiple kids have to miss time and games uh, due to either contracting COVID or being caught up in the in close contact. So it was a, uh, it was really hectic in, at first, and we kind of got used to it, you know, with with, with the team. And um, you know, it, it's tough for me because I love to verbally, you know, communicate with my my kids so they can see my expressions, and that's kind of hidden when I'm when I'm behind a mask, but. You know, anything to keep our, our kids safe. And I'm glad that, you know, I would have done anything in order to get a season in. Right. And, and I know just from watching you, you're super e expressive and emotional when coaching. So I can only imagine that barrier for you just trying to get a facial expression across. And the girls are like, uh, what are you trying to say, coach? <laughs> now, um, I want to talk about some unbelievable news here. And I just found out, um, I want to say a couple days ago, not only did the team win the EC ECC title for the second year in a row, you were named ECC Coach of the Year again for the second time in a row. What led you to this result as a coach and as a team? Um, it, it, was, it was really, really awesome for the girls to be able to you know, not only compete, but also complete, compete at a high level. When you lose two great stars like Kate Gary and Jillian Hayes, you know, this was supposed to be the year that Loveland took a major step back, especially with schools like Lebanon entering in, uh, Little Miami uh, as well, and Wenton Woods to our, to our conference. Um, but these kids right away, we had two leaders step up and Jenna Bachelor Tennis Program and said, hey, we don't want to take a step back. You know, we want to we want to continue to be, you know, be great. Our goal is to win the ECC again, and you know that's what we, we got off to a great start, and you know had a little bit of stumbling towards the middle end part of the season. But you know, when it came down to hey, we got to go to Lebanon and win this game in order to to you know secure the ECC, and our girls put in an absolute bang out performance and. I just, you know, I couldn't say enough about, about them and our leadership and they deserve, they deserve being ACC champs and, um, you know, the, the coach of the year stuff, you know, it doesn't really, it's awesome. And it doesn't really, I don't strive to be, be coach of the year, but that's just, 
you know, a testament to our program, our kids, and you know, the coaches vote on it. So I don't vote on it. I can't vote for my my myself. And you know, I just you know, to have the respect of the coach in the league is is pretty awesome. You know what, and, and I love you saying that because that just shows how absolutely selfless you are. I mean, most coaches, yeah, you know, second time, but you, you're, you're saying, <laughs> hey, it's the team. It's the team. It's the coaches yeah, it, that gave me that respect. I love that. Yeah, it really is. Plus 25, know, I, that's not a bad record. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's not. A, you know, these, these awards, the first time I, I won Coach of the Year, I – um. Uh, I gave away my plaque. This was when I was a clerk. I gave away my plaque to my my high school coach. I said, you know, coach, this is for this is for for you. My first one. I always said, if I ever want to coach the year, I'm going to give my plaque to my coach, uh, Jerry Snodgrass out of Finley. My second time last year when I wanted it at Loveland, I gave it away to my dad, and uh, I said, you know, dad, this this one is is for you. So this is really the first year that I guess I consider, you know, it for, you know, for me and I'll actually keep the, keep the plaque, you know, in my office somewhere. So pretty cool. Wow. I didn't know that you gave the other ones away. That's, that's awesome. So this one's yours. You better keep it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so let, let's talk a little bit about postseason play. Um, I know as an athlete and my dad's been a coach for years, sometimes it's not fun to talk about if you lost, you know, and, and you feel as though you could have gone farther. I understand that, but I'm just curious as to, you know, it was a close game against Lebanon, right? 49 to 44. You still got to the third round of the yeah. tournament. You know, what do you think you could have done differently as a coach and as a team um, to maybe secure a victory or get farther maybe for next year? We, th that game against uh, uh, London was really tough, and I knew it was going to be tough on our kids. It was the third time we were playing playing them, and it's, it's hard to beat a time uh, three times in a row. And kudos to Levin and their kids. They had a great game plan. They, they really focused on shutting down uh, Jenna that, that game, which they hadn't been able to do the previous two, two games. And Jenna didn't score until the fourth quarter. They did a great job of just, you know, you know, so securing her and, you know, uh, our shots weren't falling. You know, we played excellent defense. You know, we, we held them under under 50 and, you know, uh, we, we played excellent defense, but our shots were just, they just weren't falling from the other, you know, the other kids. And, you know, we really wouldn't have done much differently. Um, the game plan was great. You know, we had a great game plan. You know, sometimes the, the shots just don't, don't fall. And I told our kids, you know, I'm proud of, you know, I'm I'm proud of them. You know, and we all hate to hate to lose, but you know, I couldn't be more proud of, of this of this group and the group that everyone said couldn't couldn't do it and couldn't get this far. And and here they are, you know, in the sectional sectional title game. And this group of seniors will go down as the uh, most decorated group of seniors uh, in wins in school history. This group has never had a losing season. This group has never lost or has never um, had less than 18 wins in a season. And so, you know, they, they just don't know losing. And, you know, you know, Tess and Jenna, they will go on to do great things. And, you know, we'll, we'll keep plugging along at Loveland. Yeah, and, and honestly, that's what I was going to touch on next because I heard that too, that, oh, you're losing your all-stars, this and that. And I'm like – there's talent there still, guys. If you look at the stats, if you look at the defensive stats, they can still produce, right? So you definitely had unbelievable talent on the team this year. You know, as you mentioned, Jenna, I mean, she finished fifth in the ECC for scoring, 13.7 points per game, fourth in blocks, third in steals. And then you have Olivia who finished third in blocks, you know, 1.6 per game. And then, you know, you have the all CC teams that just came out. Jenna and Tess, both first team. Uh, Naya, second team. It's pretty awesome. And uh, then, you know, you have somebody that grabbed honorable mention as well. So, you know, talk a little bit more about these ladies. In your opinion, what made them so successful this season? I think what made us more successful is we, this was the group that played, um, 
it, we relied on everyone. So we, we didn't go into the season, you know, in years past, we knew that, hey, Jillian can get a 20, you know, uh, a game, and she's going to go for it. She's going to, she's going to get it. We can count on that. You know, this year, Jenna could have easily averaged 20 points at 20 points a game, but it would have made it tougher for us to, to win. This team was built on everybody, you know, getting a little bit of a uh, piece of the action. So she actually sacrificed, you know, uh, some of her scoring, you know, for the betterment of the team. I, I truly believe if she would have averaged 20, 25 points a game, we wouldn't have been successful. You know, would have, you know, everyone wouldn't have been able to, to shine and, um, you know, we, we did that and we had some young kids like like Josie Early uh, and Olivia. They're just sophomores and, you know, they really stepped up. It's hard. It, I'm hard on our kids and it's hard for sophomores, you know, to compete at this level sometimes. They did, they did, a, they did a great job and um, Nia and, and Vivi, uh, Clayton coming over from different schools. It was almost like they were freshmen. They, they didn't know our, our system and they came in and gave us an absolute killer of a of a boost to go with the other kids and they're just juniors. So they'll be back. They'll be back next year, and you know we return uh, seven of our nine players. So uh, I think we're in good shape with Ella Nagel and, and um, uh, being able to step up her game and, and get some get some time. And Rachel Yeager, who has an unbelievable. Uh, amounts of ability she's just got to put it together and she's going to be a big contributor for us next year as, as well so i think we're set up well for the future that right there just tells me it's going to get even better i mean it, and i'll tell you the most impressive piece of it all is when i see those girls that are in the top for scoring those same girls are in the top for defensive stats too so that's yeah a well-rounded player and that attests to you as a coach teaching that you know what beyond what the professional world of sports says scoring isn't everything it has a lot to do with defense which is what you said with your Lebanon game you kept them under 50 being a college basketball athlete like yourself you know if you keep them under 50 you're doing something right so I mean respect honestly for that now talking about next season you know you have a lot of girls coming back good girls, girls that you can develop that are developing right now. Um, so what are your goals for next season? Um, you did touch on who's returning. Um, are there any newcomers or transfers? And what is the plan for the off season? Um, we, we have a, a, a solid group of freshmen that are going to, that are going to come in from the, from the middle school that are really going to start to boost the depth of our, you know, of our, of our program. Uh, as far as transfers, I really, you know, I, I don't know until they, they show up, you know, the first day of school, they, they're just, they're just there. And, you know, the athletic department right. says, hey, this young lady wants to play bas basketball. So we'll, we'll see uh, uh, about that. But um, some of our JV players that we're, that we're really looking, looking forward to moving to the next level, Gabby Saleta, who is also a soccer player, you know, has a great, you know, she, she's very aggressive a good shot on her so she could be one um that 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 steps in uh leah leah schwab uh um is another little guard who was a tennis player wasn't even going to wasn't even going to play um this year it came in and took over the point guard responsibilities you know we're, we're, we're looking forward to her katie sarah bebel you know uh and polakowski or Hannah Polkowski, we have a lot of young kids that are, that are hungry, you know, to, to come in, compete along with these, these freshmen that are coming in. So it'll be, uh, it'll be interesting to see who kind of progress, progresses during the summer and, um, uh, you know, wants to take those, those two, two or three spots that are available on varsity and, um, you know, it'll help our young kids, you know, continue to develop. I, I don't like to bring up young kids too fast. I always tell our kids, I said, I will play on varsity when you're physically available, strong enough to, to play on, on varsity. Sometimes, you know, you get a 14 year old kid playing against an 18 year old woman. And, and that's big, that's a big difference. And I, I won't ever put a kid in, in a bad position, you know, just to win, win games. I want them to develop and, and we'll get them there. 
And I love you saying that because, you know, when I was a freshman playing on varsity, I was 90 pounds going up against like these all-stars. And yes, it, it, it's, it's a lot to handle, you know, so, so that's awesome that you think about that because, you know, in my day and probably in yours too, they didn't think that much about the size and the weightlifting and all of no. that wasn't necessarily a thing. And now you have women, like they're not yeah. girls, <laughs> they're women out there. So <laughs> yeah, I can definitely relate to that. <laughs> now, um, I do want to change the tone a little bit, um, just to kind of talk about what you went through this year. Um, personally, you know, I understand that this season was somewhat challenging, um, you know, you battling cancer and whatnot. And, you know, one of the things I really loved is you announced it to the community you weren't scared, you know, you were brave and the community immediately rallied around you and your family, which I mean, that's Loveland, right? That that's just so awesome to me. That really says a lot about your character. So take us through your battle, you know, whatever you feel comfortable with, of course, you know, what were some highs and some lows and you know, how did you manage to stay focused on your coaching responsibilities? All of that just, you know, how did, how did it play out for you? Well, it was uh, it was October twenty fifth. Was the day that I was uh, I went to the to the doctor, and you know after having some some complications, and um, over the next few days I was did a lot of tests, uh, colonoscopy, uh, biopsies, and that's how they discovered um, you know my my cancer. Which I, I, I thank God that I you know, went. Uh, that my fiance kind of forced me to go because I was stubborn about getting into the going to the doctor and, and and they discovered it quicker than maybe normally would have. And so, you know, after you go through the hearing the the C word and and you know you go through the emotions of that and you know tears and all of this stuff, you know, I immediately went to okay, I gotta let you know my kids know. I gotta let my parents know. I gotta let my my team know, and, and the, the community. And a few days later, I because uh, the season was getting ready to start. I mean, literally, we were like three days from the season starting, and um, I had a meeting. I brought I first brought our captains together, and I said, Jenna and Tess, and I said, Hey, here's what I'm, you know, what I'm going through, and I could see kind of, you know, the fear on their eyes. I said, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be good. I said, I want to coach you guys. I want I want to continue to coach. And, um, you know, I said, and I am going to continue to, to continue to coach. I said, you know, let's talk with the team and, you know, bring it to the team. And, you know, I talked to the, the rest of the girls, um, both varsity and JB, brought them all together, along with my principal and, and AD, you know, and coaches and, you know, a lot of tears and this and that. But it, it all turned to kind of joy once they realized, that, hey, he's going he's to continue to to coach us. And that's when they started to rally around, around me. And I let our parents know. And then I let the, you know, the community know. And that was, you know, it was important to me that Loveland knew, you know, what I was going through and to continue to support our kids if I'm not there or whatnot. And the community just, it, my expectations were blown away because I, did, I didn't do it for self-pity. I, I wanted to be honest and, you know, upfront, and and they really rallied around me, the parents, the community, uh, the administration, and everybody has just been great with the t-shirts and the wristbands and the car magnets and um, donations, you know, every, everything like that. And, you know, the first thing that our kids said is, hey, coach, we want to just, you know, we wanna, we're going to play this season for you and I think it gave them a different focus throughout the season you know that I was like wow they're, they're really locked in you know for, for, for this this group and um, it's just been the, the support has been overwhelming and I, I love our community at, at Loveland they just you know I knew it after a couple of years but now even more you know we are we take care of each other you know, in, in Loveland, and, you know, I will never, you know, never forget that at all, and, you know, through, through all of this. Yeah, I mean, seeing all the support, just living in Loveland just was unfathomable. I mean, 
and the biggest piece, and I don't know if you touched on, but you sharing your experience helped others as well. There's a lot of people that have been touched by cancer in this community. I mean, you know, David Miller's own wife, right? So you putting it out there that you're going to, you're going to keep coaching. You're going to be brave. You're going to do what you have to do. I think that inspired a lot more people than you actually know, which that means a lot, a lot to this community and a lot to cancer survivors or people that are still going through it. Or even, you know, the one that we just lost, you know, the young, yeah. the young kid, you know, Grant, it's like, you just never know. So, but yeah. anywho, I, I okay. Think let's a, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I think that's it. That was an important, you know, for me to do, and um, uh, just I think me having a podcast. People are used to seeing me in an upbeat, positive manner, and I never, I never wanted to change that. And once I, uh, the community, they were so hey, keep us up to date. I, I felt like hey, I got to keep keep my my family, which is my loved one family, up to date and. Uh, what's going on with you know when I go to chemo and sharing the pictures and everything like that? If I can uplift someone else, you know, you know I'm 43 years old and, and going through this, and I'm fairly healthy and fairly fairly young. But I, you know, I can't. You know, for me, there's no need for me to ever complain when I see kids that have to go through this, and I see uh, elderly folks that have to go through this. I I just couldn't couldn't imagine. So if I can help them just a little bit, I, I'm all for it. I love that mentality. That's such a great mentality to have. Now, obviously you're feeling a little bit better now, which is great. Um, so just out of curiosity, you know, how's your family doing? Um, I was curious as to what types of special things maybe did your family and friends do during your battle? And were there any special moments, you know, moments that you'll never forget that you were like, wow, that act of kindness or that particular fundraiser or something of that nature, any of those moments stick out to you? Um, my, my, my family's been, been great. Um, you know, they, they've really rallied around me, you know, in, in this process, you know, obviously um, through all of this, I lost my dad is, is well um, a month after getting, getting diagnosed. So we, you know, we went through that, you know, as well, but, you know, family's doing great. My kids are doing doing really well. You know, what I will ever, you know, forget is um, being able to, you know, I have parents of the team and just random folks say, hey, can we have your address? We're going to drop off, off dinner tonight to, to you and your, your family. And just, you know, I will get knocks on the doors and, you know, here's, you know, lasagna or here's, you know, a, a, a taco kit. You know, just stuff to just say, hey, we, you know, we're here for you. We we care. You know, don't ever you know hesitate to, you know, to to ask. You know, why the parents created one of the t-shirts along with RP Dive. You know, RP Dive had a t-shirt made with one of my ex ex players, and then uh, one of the parents created a t-shirt as well. Uh, you know, I get, I probably get a, a call or a text from. Uh, K. Gary, almost every week, you know, just you know, coach, how you doing? Checking in on you, you know, that that stuff means means uh, means a lot. I did a stay and reached out last night. Just hey, coach, I just wanted to see how you were, you know, you were you were doing. And for young people to do that, that's, that's big time. You know, that they that they care and um, you know they're they're really thinking about me. So that really stands out to me the most. Yeah, and that just says that, you know, you made a huge impact in their lives and, and honestly, you know, changed their mentality for the better. So that, that, that's, once again, a test to your great coaching <laughs> skills. <laughs> now, um, we'll go ahead and revert back to your coaching skills. Um, so obviously, you've been building up a very successful coaching resume. Uh, so in saying that, you know, what are your plans for the future as a coach? Um, do you ever think about coaching the next level um, or do you plan on finishing your time out at Loveland? And, you know, just to add on to that, are any of your kids in sports? And if so, do they want to play, you know, for the next level? I get the college question a lot. Like, do you want to coach college? And my answer is always no. Like I have no interest whatsoever in, in coaching college, recruiting kids, being on, you know, the road. It, it's, 
it, no, it, I think that would take the joy out of, <laughs> out of it for for me. I love the high school. I love the high school scene, and you know, I plan to be at Loveland as, as long as Loveland will, will will have me. I always said I would coach to fifty, and then kind of retire. I don't. Fifty just seems too young to to, to retire. And I'm like looking at you know these fourth, third, and fourth graders that you know gotten to know me since you know, they were just babies. I'm like you know. I gotta be around for these guys, these guys too. So I'm gonna, you know, as long as my health allows it, I'm gonna continue to to coach. Um, my daughter, my youngest daughter, uh, is a freshman at Dakota West. It that's the toughest part is not being able to see um, a lot of her games. I only got to see four of her games uh, this year because of the way the schedules work out. But you know, we talked about this before. She started high school and she, she wants me to continue to coach Loveland. And, you know, uh, I get it with COVID, I got a chance to watch all the videos online. So, you know, I was able to watch the games afterwards and, you know, kind of coach her up as, as dad. And I coach her in the summer uh, as well. So we do get the, the uh, summer ball experience uh, uh, together. So, you know, Loveland, uh, I plan for that to be my to be my last spot. <laughs> now, is your daughter wanting to go on and play further, you think? I know she's only a freshman, but I know the thought was already in my head when I was a freshman, so. Yeah, she, she really she really does. She wants to uh, play at the next level. She's, uh, um, she's about five, eight already right now, so I'm like, not sure where she got her height from. I didn't get it from me. And, um, she's a lefty and <laughs> Plays, plays guard. Um, she's she's coming along really really wow. well. So she'll be next level. So we'll see. That, that's awesome. It sounds like she's already uh, getting her way towards that because five eight's pretty big and a lefty. Yes. I mean that's you know how that is in college ball. If you're lefty, that's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So. We'll go to the fun question. You know, my last question is always really random, um, but it's more because I'm really excited about it. So March Madness, let's go. Finally, March Madness. So obviously we didn't get to experience it um, last year. So I know I'm definitely looking forward to it. Um, so is there any teams you're rooting for? Um, will you do a bracket this year? And uh, do you have a final four in mind? And who do you think it'll win it all? Yes, I, 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 this is my favorite time of the year. I love, love March Madness, love, love this. I watch both, both sides uh, of, the, of the coin. And, you know, my, I got my final four. I think I got my final four teams, you know, ready as of, as of now. Uh, on, the, on the lady side, um, I'm a big fan of, of Louisville. I love their program. I love their coach, maybe because we went to camp there. So, you know, they're going to be in my, my final four. South Carolina is going to be in my final four. Of course, UConn is back with, you know, with, with, with Paige uh, Rutgers, the, the freshman. And then I think Stanford, you know, on, on, the, on the lady side. So, you know, that's, that's going to how my bracket is going to shape up as long as, you know, Selection Sunday, they allow it to, you know, throw, those are all in different brackets. And then on the, the guy side, I grew up in Northwest Ohio, so – I'm a Buckeyes fan, so I'm going to put Ohio State in there. Gonzaga is playing really well. I hate doing it because I hate these guys, but Michigan, it, I think they're going to be in the, in the final four. <laughs> and then Kansas is my for the, for the guy side. So I am going to interview brackets at work. Um, my fiance, she's, she's doing a bracket, so I'm going to do her bracket and make it mine. You know, for her, for her work, and then I was with my buddies. You know, we we do a bracket, so it'll be interesting. Now, do you uh, do anything fun? Like, you hold uh, little, you know, viewing parties or you know anything like that for March Madness? I actually do. My my friends come over for the first Thursday and Friday. Uh, I take off work. I've done it for years now. Take off work. They all come to my house. I set up about three TVs in my living room, and we watch all of the all of the games, you know, until night. And we have this little game that we play. Um, uh, we have dollar bills, so we all come with a stack of dollar bills, 
and in the middle of the game, we'll say, okay, the next next bucket's going to be by, you know, Gonzaga. And you stick a dollar down, and if somebody wants to match, they can stick a dollar down for the next bucket and another guy. It's so, um, you know, winner picks up the two bucks. Or if someone's shooting a free throw, I think he makes one or two. No, he doesn't make two or two. So we'll put the, the money down and, you know, just a little fun, you know, makes, keeps, it, keeps it fresh. That actually sounds like a fun game. I might implement that to my viewing parties. <laughs> All right. Well, I definitely want to go ahead and wrap this up. Um, but I do want to touch on one more thing that kind of came across our desk recently here. Um, a fundraiser. Um, you know, Miss Jessica Early called us uh, earlier, you know, uh, this week. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about this uh, fundraising opportunity? Yeah, it, it, um, I, I spoke with Jess uh, yesterday um, uh, a little bit on my way home from I was visiting my mom, and um, the, she came up with the idea, along with a few other parents, uh, uh, to hold uh, kind of an ongoing fundraising uh, uh, get-together that not only, you know, would assist me with, uh, you know, medical bills, but would also help kind of stimulate and get people back out you know, in downtown and downtown Loveland. So, you know, they're uh, still working on a lot of the details, but we're going to be at uh, places like Bishop's Quarter, the works, um, all of the spots that are, that are downtown, downtown Loveland uh, on, on Mondays, which is kind of a slower day. You know, just getting the community together, getting uh, uh, folks together. They're going to have guests, uh, bartenders, some of the, the spots. So a lot of, uh, Parents of players are going to be bartending, uh, you know, and they're going to have competition to see who can get the most tips, you know, thing, things like, like that. And, um, you know, just a great way to kind of celebrate life and celebrate, you know, uh, uh, the cancer battle and, and also, you know, the community of, of Loveland who has been so great. So there's a lot of moving parts, a lot of people in, involved. And, um, you know, I think they're going to, one of the spots are going to name a, a drink after, after me. Um, uh, the, you know, I obviously, you know, I was, the love Tito's vodka, so they're going to name something, and I, I can't do it now, but, you know, others can, can enjoy it. <laughs> I have a, have, a, have a great time, but I love it. I plan to be as many Mondays as, as, as possible just to say thank you to, to to people because they don't have to they don't have to do it they, they everyone's got their own lives and and things that they're dealing with and you know to take time to help support me you know i'm just a basketball coach and you know and um you know it is a testament to, to loveland and, and the community so it, it, it's going to be a great great time wow I love hearing about that and I live right down there. So, you know, I'll be there every Monday. <laughs> that is so awesome. Well, um, of course, you know, Loveland Magazine viewers will, will bring more to you about this fundraising opportunity as we get more information here. Um, but other than that, Darnell, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to touch base with you. I know it's been a rough road with COVID and, you know, you fought it and you won the cancer battle. We love it. We love it. And uh, we want to continue down that positive, positive road and keep Loveland strong and, you know, do what we have to do. Um, thank you so much. And uh, I hope you have a, a great rest of your week. And of course, we'll always be here for you if you need us. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. And thank you, Cassie. Thank you, uh, uh, David. Thank you. Love the magazine, the community. Um, you guys have been great, you know. Thank you to my, my family, fiance Sam, and you know, Mr. Canaster at the school and Miss Johnson over at the, the school. I mean, there's just too many folks to to name, and uh, I thank you guys all. I will get through this. I will uh, be a thorn in everyone's side for many many years to to come. So. <laughs> Oh, I love to hear that. All right, Darnell. Well, thank you so much. And uh, we'll, we'll be checking in with you sooner than later. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Bye, Darnell.
good with gas. Yeah, we are. <laughs>